Hello, we're going to take a polynomial back to its roots, back to what started it. And this is called factoring. And a method we're going to use is factoring by grouping. So let's take the trinomial polynomial. It's a quadratic. x squared minus 16x plus 63. Now we have to decide what our a and b and c numbers are. They're the numbers in front of the variables, or the coefficients in each term, which as you can see, a is 1, b is negative 16, and c is 63. We're going to multiply the a number, which is in front of x squared, by the c number, which is the constant at the end. What we're going to do then is give us some interesting possibilities. So a times c is 1 times 63, which is, you guessed it, 63. Now we're going to factor 63 into all its possible integer factors. 1 times 63, for instance or 3 times 21, or 9 times 7. Then again, since negative times negative equals positive, we'll also have negative 1 times negative 63, negative 3 times negative 21, and negative 9 times negative 7. Now, that's the pair we want right there. Because if you add negative 9 plus negative 7, you get negative 16, which happens to be our B number. And that's how you decide what terms you're going to use in the middle of a three-term quadratic polynomial to turn it into a four-term quadratic polynomial which is precisely what I'm going to do right now. I take the first two terms. Well, first I'm rewriting it. Remember that anytime you have subtraction, what's really going on is you're adding a negative. So I've rewritten the quadratic trinomial to show that truth. And I'm going to group together the first two terms and the second two terms, leaving the plus sign safely in the middle. Then I take the first two terms and I factor them by GCF. And I take the second two terms. And now I have to deal with a rule that says if my leading coefficient, negative 7, is negative, then I have to factor out a negative from both terms. So I'm rewriting negative 7 plus 63 in order to get a negative 7 into each term. You can see what I did there. Now I can pull a negative 7 out, and I'll be left with x minus 9, which is really, of course, x plus negative 9. And now let me explain that again. Our leading coefficient for the second two terms was negative 7. So I have no choice. I have to pull out a negative number as my GCF. That's just one of the rules you have to learn to live with. And so I had to rewrite my second two terms, my grouping of the second two terms, so that there was a negative 7 in each term. That makes the negative 7 my GCF, which is what I pull out. Remember that again. When your leading coefficient is negative, your GCF has to be negative. Now, 
that will, in factored form, give me x times x minus 9 plus negative 7 times x minus 9. x minus 9 now occurs in both terms, so I pull it out as the GCF, and what I'll be left with is an x plus negative 7, which of course is x minus 7. So here is my factorization, x minus 9 times x minus 7. But how can I be sure? I am going to multiply x minus 9 times x minus 7, and I'm going to use the FOIL method just because it's easy. First, outside, inside, last. What I get is x squared minus 7x minus 9x plus 63, Negative 7x minus 9x is negative 16x plus 63. This is what I started with. So I'm correct. I have the correct factorization.